Okay, welcome back. So we're back at our Zoo City Racer site now, and this is actually uh, the second video on using Firebug or Chrome Inspector. And um, what I want to do before we jump into the uh, website here that we've been working on is go back to a fresh install of Joomla 3. So all the way back to uh, the very beginning of our uh, Joomla tutorials here to our uh, demo install of the Protostar template for Joomla 3. Okay, so, and then right here I have the back end already loaded up here. Okay, so let's go ahead and inspect some elements here on the basic default Joomla template that we get when we first install Joomla. So if I go to this uh, getting started right here and inspect the element, and I'm in Chrome right now, okay, we can be in Firefox, Firebug, or uh, Chrome Inspector for this. I'm in using Chrome, so... Okay, so there we go. And right away, let's see, we can see this uh, anchor color here, okay? And that's going to change not just this heading here, but all of the anchor tags, okay? So let's go ahead and just change the color here. And we've changed that to this uh, reddish color right here. Okay, and as you can see, since what we did is we changed the anchor tag, the link tag, it's changed everything, okay? Anything that's a link on the page is now that red color. Let's go ahead and change that to a blue or a purplish color right here, blue color. Okay, and now they're all blue. Okay, so what if I want to actually make that color blue? How do we do that? Okay, well, there's a number of ways we can do it, but we have a really nice hint right here. Um, template.css on line 197 is where this particular uh, um, anchor selector is located okay and so then we just need to find this property and then change this value right here to this new color okay and we go ahead and copy that so let's go ahead and find that okay so we know it's at template.css on line 197 okay so back over here in the Joomla back end I'm going to go to my template manager okay and we are using the uh, protostar template here and now, um, if you remember, when we click right on this, uh, the protostar here, uh, it takes us in, well, let's look at it real quick. It takes us to this area where we have some basic options here, okay? And in this case, we don't have much, okay, in this default template, but we can assign the template to various menus. But um, as we install different templates, for example, if we install one with the Gantry framework or the Helix framework like we did on my site here, um, this area gets pretty robust, okay? But I'm gonna go ahead and go back and show you something. You see how this says styles? If we click on templates, that brings us to a little bit different area here, okay? We still can click on the, whoop, the template that um, we wanna use. In this case, the Protostar one was the default. Now I'm gonna go ahead and click on Protostar details and files. And that gives me access to all of the files here, okay? Now, um, the one we want is CSS, okay? And um, if we, if, um, let's see here, template.css line 197 is where we wanna change that anchor tag to. Okay, so let's go ahead and open up the CSS files here, and there's template.css, okay, nice and easy. Okay, now, um, so a lot of different ways to edit CSS. Uh, I just wanna do a basic change right now. If you are in here, the first thing that I'm going to recommend is you just go ahead and copy all of that code and just stick it somewhere, okay? So um, there, now I, I just have that code as a backup in case I do some damage in here, just messing around to show you. So we know that I was at all the way up here at one line 197. So let's go ahead and go up there, 197, where are we at? Okay, there we go, 197, there we go, okay? Now let's, um, there's that anchor, right? Okay, and there's that color. So let's go ahead and um, copy this new color right here. Put that in here. And we'll go ahead and just replace this all together. Okay, like so. All right, easy enough, and let's just hit save. Okay, and let's come back over here and uh, close this and uh, refresh. Now remember, normally when we refresh after making some edits in Inspector Firebug, it's going to go back to how it was. However, there we've just refreshed, and as you can see, this color is now that blue color. We have actually changed the CSS, okay? So how nice is that? All you have to do is highlight, or a hover, I mean, and inspect an element, 
and it tells us exactly where that element is located, okay? For example, this selector right here, the anchor selector, um, is located at template.css, and that was just easy enough to find just like that, okay? Now, um, as we install more templates and we're making larger changes, this can get more complicated, okay? And we'll go ahead and look at our template next, the one that we have installed right here, okay? Um, Let's go ahead and go back here now and mess around a little bit more. So I have uh, changed something. I'm going to go ahead and inspect that element again. Now I've changed this, okay? Easy enough. Um, I can actually, you know, add code anywhere I want to. For example, we know that um, this right here is an H2, okay? Right? Let's see. Right there, H2, and that's an H2, okay? And um, so let's go ahead and look at what we have here for our H2s. So we have a font size right here, 22 pixels. What if we you know, get really obnoxious and make that 220 pixels? Look at that mess, okay? But um, as you can see, if I wanted that for some bizarre reason, I could just go into template.css on line 7009 and change that to that. But I'm gonna go ahead and maybe we'll make this, oh, let's just make it 15. Okay, so there we go. And if I wanted to change that, I could go ahead and do that now, okay? Easy enough. So um, I just wanted to give you a basic example of messing around with Chrome Inspector and um, with the default template here and show you, you know, where your files are actually located, okay? And in this case, we just have the one CSS file. And as you dive into templates and start to see how other developers are putting these things together, um, you're going to run into a lot more uh, CSS style sheets to edit. And um, luckily, again, if I jump back over here, um, Inspector Firebug will tell us where to find those, okay? And um, now another thing that's great about being able to do this is if you download a template and install it and it's almost what you want, but not quite, you know, maybe the H1s are the wrong color or the wrong size, or you don't like the way the anchors are, or you don't like how when you hover over this demo site, it turns into that light blue, you'd rather it did something else. You can start to, uh, you know, inspect the various elements, just like it says when you right click here, inspect the element. And, um, dig through here and start to customize everything and make it how you want it, okay? And the fact that you have this is really a freeing tool for when you download a template and install it because maybe that template is almost what you want. Um, it has some of the functionality and the layout that you're looking for, but of course you want to make some changes to customize it. This is how you do it. So speaking of, let's go ahead and jump into our uh, pretty simple here, the PRI simple template that I have here, and um, take a look at some ways we can customize this particular site and um, fix an error that I found right off the bat. Okay, so um, let me go ahead and refresh this real quick, and I'm going to go ahead and close out of these. Okay, now notice my drop downs up here, they're working exactly how I want them to. Okay, that's great. Now, watch this. So I'm going to go ahead and click on my arrow to change my slider. My drop downs are gone. Okay, so that's an error that I need to fix in this template. Okay, this slider did not come with this template. If you remember, this was that wide slide that I uh, downloaded as a third party extension and installed on this template. Okay, so um, I need to make some adjustments to make these work together. All right, because right now I'm not getting drop downs. Now I do know what's happening here. Um, what's happening is that everything renders fine at first, and then once this uh, wide slide cycles through a couple of images, it throws off the stack order of my elements, okay? And I'll show you what I mean here. So if I highlight here and inspect the element, Okay, and what I want to do is I want to actually pinpoint the uh, actual the drop down here, the sub menu right there. Okay, now um, what's going on here is um, you can see that it still exists, right? When I hover over the element, it's still you can see that right here it's showing. Yes, that's where the drop down um, is or is supposed to be. Okay, and that's my uh, sub menu right here. Okay, um, all that's happening is that it's being covered up. And so one thing that I can do is I can come over here 
and I can actually add in what's called, and I'll, I'll visit the W3 schools after this to show you what I'm doing here, okay? Is I need to change the Z index, okay? And um, that's colon, and we'll go ahead and just give this some kind of a weight so that it sits higher up. And we'll just put in five, okay? And uh, semicolon, all right? And now let's go ahead and try that. And there it is, okay? And I can uh, close this. I can cycle through different images and I have my drop downs okay now what is a Z index right and um, anyway I have pulled up here again if you ever don't know what is happening with a particular element then go to the W3 schools because it's all laid out there so um, anyway Z index like it says right here the Z index property specifies the stack order of an element okay so obviously this thing was behind this uh, slider okay and so I just uh, increased the weight of it a little bit and brought it up okay so I uh, brought it up to a five and of course I tested it a couple times before I made this video and found out that that worked alright so where was this located at let's go ahead and talk about that now okay so I'm gonna go ahead and inspect the element again okay and it was right here yep okay there's my Z index so it says it's located right here at a template.css line 806 okay and what I want to do is I want to add in this bit of code right here okay although there's a few different things that we can do alright so let's go ahead and uh, open up another uh, window here and type in zoocityracers.com slash administrator and we'll get into the back end here Okay, and again we'll go to uh, Template Manager, and just like before, over here to Templates, and down here to my Pre-Simple, okay, and there's the CSS. Okay, now let's look again. So it's at template.css line 806. Let's check that out first. Okay, so template.css, and again, notice how there's quite a few here, and uh, there's a really useful one right here called Custom CSS. But first let's look at Template CSS. And I believe that was 805. Was that the line? Let's see here. Okay, 805. Um, there we go, right there, 806. Okay, so um, right here, let's look. Yep, there's that uh, SP submenu. Okay, template.css uh, 806, margin top 30 pixels, and then Z index 5. That's something I added, right? And let's go ahead and look over here. Okay, there we go, that margin top 30 pixels. And then under here, I can actually just add Z index, okay, just like that, and uh, colon and 5 semicolon. Now, I can do that, no problem. That'll work just fine okay there's something else that we can do well let's go ahead and demonstrate this first so I'll go ahead and save this okay and we'll come over here and uh, refresh okay so drop downs are working let's cycle through some images here drop downs are still working okay perfect alright now I'm gonna go ahead and go back here go back down to line what is it 806 Okay, there we go, line 806, and I'm going to, uh, well, what I'm going to actually do is copy this whole entire uh, thing, okay, and copy that, okay, and no point in having that there, so we'll just delete that. So we're back to where we were, okay, let's go ahead and save, okay, back over here and refresh, okay, so we have our drop downs, I cycle through a couple images, drop downs are broken, okay, now, Check this out. I can go into um, whoever created this template here, added this uh, custom CSS, and um, I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And look at that. I have a custom CSS uh, style sheet right here that's totally blank. And if I want to, I can paste in, okay, and uh, with my Z index added. Okay, now all I have to do is save that. And I've done a couple of really cool things here. I've added some CSS without changing any of the files that came with the template, right? 
okay so um, I can actually add everything inside of here and um, you'll see this is real common so when you get a new template installed dig through your files and see how the developer has set them up okay because um, there's a lot of different ways to do this and honestly the way CSS is read we could stick this bit of code again at the bottom of our uh, template.css um, there's a lot of different things that we could do to get the CSS to take just the way it's read but this is a really nice convenient thing that's set up right here and it's nice and clean and it's very uh, well, damage free, okay? Because um, I just threw this in. And um, so I'm going to go ahead and save and close now. And we'll come back over here and refresh and see what we did. Okay, so we have our drop downs. And then I cycle through some images. And I still have my drop downs, okay? So nothing's broken. Okay, so that's great. Okay, so that's a great example of um, doing a basic adjustment to fix a bug in this template. Oh, it's not really a bug. I mean, to be honest, this uh, slider right here, this image slider, it was not made to go with this template. Um, uh, this is a totally different third-party extension. And so I had to, you know, make a few changes to get these two to play nicely together. All right. And um, so you do want to, you know, take some time to explore how your files are set up and see what's offered there. And you can do any customizing that you want to. Now, um, back in styles here, if I click on my uh, pretty simple default here, we have a ton of options right here built into it as well. Okay, so um, when you know you need to make some changes to your site, it's good to get in here and see what is offered within, you know, in this case, the Helix framework, just so that you can make some changes without having to mess around with too much code. For example, the uh, presets here, these colors, that's a way to change some colors, okay? And if you remember, that's how I actually change these colors. Of course, I could uh, inspect the element, find that color, okay, and change that to, you know, red or whatever, and then go in and change it, okay? And um, some templates will offer something this nice, some won't. Um, in this case, it looks like I've got these colors here that I can choose from. Um, of course, I have infinite amount of freedom in doing it this way. But it's good to go ahead and uh, check out both sides. Check out, uh, I'm going to go ahead and back out of this. Check out your styles and what's offered here for um, the different options for um, customizing your site. And of course, check out the uh, actual CSS style sheets within the uh, styles tab right here, okay? And um, see how everything is set up. Because when you download it, or when you install a template, all the files are wide open, okay? So once you get a good workflow down here, um, working with Chrome Inspector or Firebug, um, you really start to look at templates knowing that, okay, the basic layout, the basic functionality are things that you want, but you're going to know that you're not chained down to the colors, to the fonts, to the, uh, you know, letter spacing and the line height, or if you want more padding around things or different images. Um, you are not chained down by any of those, and so you start to look at templates as just another building block that you can then pull apart and totally customize and make your own. So um, again, that's Chrome Inspector and Firebug, two excellent free tools.